Hi, this is Sue, the Soggy Stamper. It's uh, Friday afternoon. We've got a couple of minutes and then we'll get started on my Friday afternoon Facebook Live. Um, I'm delighted to share with you this uh, cute card that I have. It's an easy fancy fold. Um, and I also want to show you the boo-boos I made because even though I've been a demonstrator for t over 21 years, I still make mistakes. Yep. So don't feel discouraged if you're a new stamper and you have problems. It happens to us all. So a couple more minutes and we'll get started. We'll give people a chance to hop on the live. Hi, Nancy. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're watching. Are you into Halloween cards at all? I don't make too many. Um, I used to send Halloween tricks to all our grandkids and, gr and great grandkids, but it has gotten so expensive with postage that even an envelope with a card and a little chocolate mint or something like that inside costs like five bucks to send it, which is ridiculous, but that's the way it goes. I am, I guess, past spoiling my grandkids that way. If they lived close by, that would be a different story. I would love to have them come trick-or-treating. So we've got another minute to go. Welcome those who are watching it live. Oh, Hetty. Hey, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're able to catch this. Yeah, so once I get started, I'm not able to watch um, my iPad for comments, but rest assured that I will, um, once I get through uh, filming it, I will respond to your comments. And Ruthie, you're here. Whoa, we are having a party today. Yay. And there's the clock. It says it's 3 o'clock, so let's get it started. The, this card I'm going to feature the scary so uh, the scary cute bundle with these cute um, uh, silhouette stamps and then the dies to cut out some of them actually really doesn't cut out much of anything oh just the just the label there I would I should have looked more closely because I thought these I thought I was going to get a bundle and be able to cut out the figures but this when it has an outline around it like that, shows that that is a die, but it does not show it around any of the others, and I should have known that. Anyway, so it's found on the fall catalog on page 56 for a bundle. It's not a real expensive bundle, um, like some of them are, and that's because the dies don't cut out the kids, I guess. And probably it would be very difficult to make a die to cut out the fine details. And that might be the biggest determination about whether they have a die for it or not. So let me show you. These are the dies. And this is the stamp set. And so this is the only thing. And it cuts out the greetings. And all the greetings fit within this die. The other dies, there's a haunt, haunted house, looks like this, and this die, this die cuts out this, and if you want to have it, just have a solid outside. You know, you know, if you don't want it to be a frame, then you just use this piece. This piece cuts it out so you have it like this. I was kind of surprised. The first one I cut out, I went, wait, that's not what I intended. There's a black cat, a variety of bats, and a moon. So that is what we're going to be using. And I've done the cutting. 
Um, there's nothing particular, especially exciting about doing die cutting. So the card we're going to make is this one. And the, what's kind of neat about it is it folds up like this so that it stands up. Looks like that. And then I've used the label, the greeting, as the thing to hold it up. So it's easy, and yet at the same time I had troubles with it. You start out with a piece of cardstock, and this is basic gray, and it's eight and a half by four and a quarter. And we're going to score it at four and a quarter, crosswise. Oops, get the cutting blade out of the way. Okay, then we're going to do it on a diagonal. And here's where the tricky part is. The diagonal needs to be from the from the bottom up. It needs to be like this, coming this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the for the place where I scored first, I'm going to turn this and I'm going to line it up like that and then score. So then we can use a bone fold to make it good form. And this diagonal folds under make a mountain fold out of that. So it looks like this. Now, you have to be really careful because I had scored that way. On this one, I had scored that way. And I made my card, got the piece all on it. And when it folded up, because the card was this way, was my intention to fold it up that way. Or if you put it, if you started it with it, just fold it under, and I fold it that way, but your image is coming this way. So I said, okay. So I turned it the other way. And there it folds under. But then you've got it backwards. You've got it with the fold on the wrong side. So it's important that when you score it, you place it on this score line. Let me do show you again. So the score line point there, and then you do it this way, like that. Not turning it like I did, and doing it that way. Not this way. You score it down towards you. So that's the bottom. That's the base of it. Then we have two pieces of cardstock. This, ooh, scattered all my pieces. My bats went flying. So I should have three bats. And I'm missing a bat. That's in the belfry. Where'd you go? I guess I'll have two bats. And a moon. Oh. I don't need a black moon. Okay, and I have the frame in the house. Okay, so this piece is a four by four inch square. And it goes on here. So I'm going to put some snail, I mean, excuse me, seal on here and here, like that. And I'm going to place this on. Like so, so when you fold it in, it stands up like that. See, it's flat, 
and then you fold it in and it stands like that. Okay, then this piece here is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and I'm going to stamp the kids on it. This is what we're making. I'm going to stamp the kids on it. I don't have a whole lot of success with solid stamps like this. I had to, to kind of touch this one up with a marker. But let's see if I can do better. I re-inked my memento ink so it's a little juicier. My problem is, I think if I squish it, turn it this way. Okay, and I'll see how well this goes. And then hold it down there for a while so it really gets a chance to soak in. Pretty good. See, there's some areas that are a little light. And I can touch those up. Now, another way you can do it, and it might work better, I haven't tried it, but is you can stamp it first in memento ink, and then and then into this, and the memento ink will help to hold the ink on your stamp. So let's see how this goes. Ah, the feet didn't get on. Oh well, that's the way life goes. Ah, this is the reason why I hadn't put it on already. I can turn it over and undo it again. This time, I'm going to raise them up a little bit. I urge you to try that memento ink. I mean, the, the Versamark ink. Okay, so I want to fill that in. Could use a black marker. I'm going to use a black, basic black stamp and blend. Fill in some of the blanks here. The other thing you can do to prevent this from happening is to use the Stamparatus. That way you can stamp it three or four times if necessary to get a good solid image. That is what I should have done this time. I really do love my Stamparatus, I just don't think to use it. Much better. Uh, let's see. Yep, that'll do it. Okay, so now this is supposed to fit in, is designed to fit inside the frame like this. However, because I'm only using a four inch square, I it's too big, too tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the bottom. Of the frame and just make it like it's two trees standing there well like an arbor so it'll go like here and then I'll have the house tucked in A bit. Like that. It'll be like that. And I'm going to use stamping the liquid multi-purpose glue for it. Or you could use the fine tip glue if you prefer that. 
it's really useful for these small areas like this, I have to agree. Unless you have it, your multi-purpose liquid glue trained to do just a little dabs. Come on, dabs. Like this. And then I don't have to be so careful with the house. It's bigger. And then I want to have a yellow moon. This is one of the dies in the set. I had a little bat floating, flying in front of the moon. The only problem with multi-purpose liquid glue is you get it on your fingers. The bats are part of the dyes. Now, if the other bat would show its face, see it anywhere around here. Couldn't have gone too far. But this is good enough. Okay, so now the trick is to mount this on here so when it folds it stands up like this. A little bit of heat of, of seal. it up like that and then our card will stand up like so the label I'm going to mount with stamp and dimensionals so that it pops up and catches that edge I'm going to fold it up, so like that, take off the backs first, and you can determine how much of an angle you want it to stand up on. I'm going to have mine stand up quite high this time, so I'm going to put that like that, and that holds it just in the right, right position, see? This one, I didn't really figure that out. So I ended up putting it down here too far, and so it doesn't stand up quite as high. But there you have it. For me, the biggest trick was figuring out, the way, figuring out how to score that. So if you look at it this way, on the back side, uh, that's not going to help you. You put it on... You put it on the thing and with a cross score there, and then you score from here down to here. So that folds in like that. So that's really a, it's really a rather easy, quick one. I made another one. I had the idea that um, I was going to stamp this on the vellum. First off, I cut it out, and then um, I thought, okay, so this is cool. I can just stamp on the, on the card on the um, Cajun, no, not Cajun craze, 
crushed curry card. Um, I cut out the bats out of this piece here. This was without using I cut it without using this extra frame. So it was just this. And everything was going really well. Kind of going in the direction I wanted it to go. But when I folded it up, there was nothing, it was, you could see through here. So I pulled the, off the layer and put it on, I backed it with crushed curry. So that when you folded it up, the moon wasn't transparent, you couldn't see behind it. And then I put the label on straight this time. I think I rather prefer it on the angle like this. And then put another couple of bats down here. So this is one, one way to use the stamp set. Uh, it's easy and cute. And there is another bat I just saw. Come on, up, I found him. We will put him on front and center here. Now sometimes what you think of when something doesn't go the way you want it to, you actually come out with it better because I had not even thought about putting a bat until I was talking to you about putting a bat there. That's a perfect accent for that. So this particular card style, you could use um, some, perhaps some, um, not sequins, but um, the uh, oh, rhinestones along there to hold the thing up. You can use your greeting. You could have um, you could have the black cat there and have him stand up partly to catch this. So there's a variety of ways that you can use this particular card. It's a four ends up being a four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, but it's a it's a it's kind of a cute fancy fold but simple to use. So thank you for watching. Um, I'll be here again next Friday at three o'clock. And um, if you have any questions, email me. My address is sue at soggystamper.com. My blog, and I'll post the dimensions for this and the sketch of how to um, score it on my blog. Sue, uh, soggystamper.com. If you need any of the product um, that I used, my store is creationsbysue.stampinup.net. And I would love to have you be my customer if you aren't already. And if you live in the United States, it would be nice to be able to have Hetty as my customer, but she lives in the Netherlands, and uh, they have their own whole system of demonstrators and things. As a matter of fact, I think she is a demonstrator. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.